Are you thinking about moving to an electric van for work? Well, if you're a sole trader or you run a fleet of business vans, this could be the most important model that comes to Australia in 2024. It's the LDV eDeliver 7, and it's not a one size fits all proposition. There are two different body lengths, two different roof heights, two different battery sizes, and a total of four different derivatives for this model range. So I'm gonna cover it all in this review. If electric vans do it for you, stay tuned. There's a lot to cover. Thanks for watching, and if you have subscribed, thanks heaps for doing so. If you haven't, please do, it helps a lot. Let's get to it. There are four different versions available of the LDV eDeliver 7 in Australia, and the pricing you'll see here is for ABN holders. So if you hold an Australian business number, these are the prices that will apply to you. If you don't, go and get one, because you'll save several thousand dollars on each of the specs. Okay, so the entry level model is this one here. It's the short wheelbase low roof, and it starts at 59,990 plus on-road costs. And then you can step up to a long wheelbase with the low roof with the same 77 kilowatt hour battery. Battery. I'm going to tell you all about the battery and powertrain specs shortly, but it costs just a few grand more. And then you've got a long wheelbase version with the low roof, and it's also got a bigger battery, an 88 kilowatt hour battery. So it might be the best one for you if you know you're going to use all of that EV range all the time. And then there's a version which has a much higher roof. Uh, it's the big boy in the range, and it doesn't cost all that much more than the entry level version. So I reckon that you are getting a lot of value for money here when it comes to to the different derivatives. Now let's talk about some of the standard equipment that you get. All of them come with a single curbside sliding door. You don't get a driver's side sliding door and you can't option one either. You can't option glazing in the back either, but all versions do come with barn doors at the back and a reversing camera as well. Sadly, no surround view camera for something this big, which is a bit of a disappointment. But you still do get a pretty good amount of spec on the inside as well. A 12.3 inch touchscreen media system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You've also got a small digital instrument cluster, which isn't as good as it could be. I'll tell you about that in the driving section, but there's also three seats as standard. So you get driver's seat with height adjustment and heating as well. You've got a heated steering wheel and on the passenger side, there are two seats. You can lift the base up for extra storage and it's got heating on that side as well. As well as that, all versions come with LED lights, LED daytime running lights, LED tail lights, but you still get 16 inch steel wheels with hubcaps. There's keyless unlocking and push button start too. So there's a fair bit to like when it comes to spec and pricing. So what competes with this van? If you're looking for the most van for your money, then, well, you have to look for the next size up. And in that segment, I would be checking out the LDV Deliver 9, which also comes with an electric version as well. But the Deliver 9 has become really popular because it offers great value for money. And hey, it's cheaper than this, uh, but much bigger. So if you need big and you don't want to spend much, maybe it's a better choice for you. But if you want something that is fully electric and you want something that maybe is a bit smaller, you could be checking out the Peugeot e-Partner and also the Renault Kangoo e-Tech. Now they are both fully electric, both with reasonable amounts of EV driving range, and they do seem to stack up pretty well from the value for money perspective, but they are smaller, so they might not fit your needs. And if you are considering something this size and you want electric, it's either this or the Mercedes-Benz e Vito, which is like 90 something thousand dollars. So you could basically buy one and a half of these for every one of those, or something like 16 of these for a million bucks, or 11 Mercedes ones for the same sort of money. So yeah, if you are spending big bucks on a fleet, that might make a lot more sense for you to choose this model. But hey, if you're still weighing up whether EV is right for you, there are still some really great diesel van options out there, including the Toyota Hiace, which I really rate. There's also the Volkswagen Transporter, which you can basically build to your needs. And there's a new generation version of that coming soon and the Hyundai Staria Load, which I really rate as well, only when it's loaded up though, check out my review and see why. And there's also a bunch of other options out there that you might wanna consider, including the Ford Transit Custom, which is about to come out with an all new model soon. It'll also have an electric one later on too. It's also gonna be the ID Cargo version of the ID Buzz coming from Volkswagen in 2024 as well. Look, lots of options out there in van world, but if you want something that's this size, at this money, that's fully electric, this is your only choice at this point in time. 
Like most of the other vans in this segment, this short wheelbase low roof version is just under two meters tall and about five meters long, and it's about 2.2 meters wide. So it is a pretty broad thing, but that means that you can fit quite a bit in the back. And if you choose the high roof version or the long wheelbase version, obviously it's much bigger. The high roof is almost 2.4 meters tall. So not gonna be underground car park friendly, and also the long wheelbase version does add quite a bit of body length as well. But keep in mind that if you do get the long wheelbase version, you still have the same size of sliding door on the curb side of the vehicle. And it does offer a pretty good amount of width there, but you can't forklift a pallet in into the side of this vehicle. Now on your screen, you'll see the cubic volume for each of the different versions that are available. Look, those are competitive figures, I reckon, considering that the long wheelbase high ace is about 6.2 cubic meters for that version. This tiny little, well, not so really tiny little short wheelbase low roof is 5.9. All right, now let's check out the back and see what this cargo zone is like. Rightio, so you've got barn doors as standard, which is great for people who are gonna use this for work, right? Uh, means that you can't get a tailgate option. That might annoy you because tailgates are really handy when it's raining and you're delivering lots of stuff. Uh, but hey, maybe you could get an awning and fit it at the back or something like that. Now, they do open to 90 degrees on both sides, but you can extend them as you can with most other vans to 180 degrees. Um, there is no like stopper or anything if you're on a hill. As you can see, it's just going to fold back in. Um, so that's a little bit annoying, but it's something that I'm sure you'll deal with. They do lock in at 90 degrees if you want them to though. Now. This one is the smallest version of this van. You can see how much space there is in here. And it is a pretty spacious van for the most affordable version and the smallest version of this vehicle. Now, I'm gonna show you some footage now of the long wheelbase version, which has still got the low roof. And now I'll also show you the high roof long wheelbase version as well. So that'll give you an idea of how much space you'll have to play with. Um, and there is plenty of space in here. And if you're wondering about payload capacity, I'll put a graphic on the screen now, which will cover off all the four versions of this vehicle because the payload does differ between each of the versions. You've got leaf springs at the back, you've got the battery pack underneath. So look, it does have a fair bit going on when it comes to the cargo capacity and the usability of this van. Also, LED lights in the cargo area and six tie down points as standard as well, and a rubber floor. Some vans ask you to pay more for rubber flooring. So, hey, it's pretty good. Also, you get this half height, um, I guess you call that protection for the panels. So you won't have dents showing up on the outside of the van. Now, one thing you might want to invest in is the accessory cargo barrier because there is no standard cargo barrier and you can't get a bulkhead for this vehicle either. Maybe there'll be something on the aftermarket. If you look at one of the Chinese supplier sites, you might be able to find something. And all versions come with a full-size spare wheel as well. It's underneath the body of the vehicle. The interior of this van is actually very user friendly. Like there are plenty of storage spaces inside the E-Deliver 7. Now that is one of the things that vans tend to do pretty well, but this one is missing one thing. It doesn't have any overhead storage like some of the other mid-sized vans do, but there is heaps of loose item storage. Like you've got a little bin here. You've got another bin here. You've got an ashtray, funnily enough. You've also got a glove box down here. There's another storage tray here. There's big bottle holders on the edges of the dashboard and you've got three levels of storage in each of the doors. There's a grab handle which you can put your keys in. There's also another section down there which you could maybe put some paperwork and down below you've got another big tray with a bottle holder and look there's plenty of storage in the cabin of this vehicle. You could even fit some stuff down between these seats uh, and you've also got a driver's seat armrest which is nice. And there's even more storage if you need it. So you can lift up the seat bases here and underneath you'll find a really good spot to store your charging cables or maybe some tools if you want them out of sight and out of mind. So that's really good to see. It is a practical van. They've obviously learnt their lessons from other brands and from their own customers when it comes to the LDV van range. So. That's great, storage is excellent. And you know what else is pretty good is this 12.3 inch touchscreen media system. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you have to plug in for both of them. And you do have a bunch of different features on this screen too. 
honestly, this screen, once you're used to the menus, it is very, very intuitive. Like you can go through to the energy section here and then you can adjust your regen braking through there. There are three different stages of regen braking. And when it comes to your drive modes, you've got a button over here to adjust the different drive modes. You've also got uh, this panel here for your air conditioning controls and my my real bugbear here is that it's very reflective and it's not backlit with the right color. So it's got a red coloring to it. it makes it really hard to see in direct sunlight. Uh, but thankfully, if you're the sort of person who's always fiddling with the air conditioning like me, you'll notice that there are little scroller wheels. So you can just adjust the fan speed and the temperature without having to think too much about it. So maybe it's not that big of an issue really. The other thing I'll call out here is that you do have really good seat comfort for the driver. It is a very supportive and comfortable seat. You've got height adjustment. You've also got this little armrest so you can have your lunch here if you're waiting for it to charge or whatever you want to do. It does seem pretty good from that perspective, although you don't have reach adjustment for your steering. So it's just tilt adjust and also one thing that might catch you out is it's got a column shifter for the transmission and it's on the right side where you might be used to indicating. Your indicators are on the left here instead. So those little things, I'm sure you'll get used to them and otherwise it's pretty nice in here. Oh, did I mention it's got a heated steering wheel? Heated seats as well? Pretty handy. Not a whole lot to see here, people. I have to say this is one of the most amazing underbonnet experiences I've had. Um, you've just got plastic, really. A couple of caps to fill things up with. I wouldn't bother with those. But you do have, under the bonnet, a front-mounted electric motor. All versions come with the same power and torque outputs. So if you are gonna be asking a lot of this van, maybe keep that in mind. But it's a single-speed transmission. All versions are front-wheel drive. Seems pretty simple, really. So what's it like to charge? And how much range do you get? Like a lot of other vans out there, you do have to open the passenger door when you're trying to fill this thing up with juice. Uh, that's your fuel filler cap, and down here you'll find your charge port. So it has an AC charge port, if I can get the thing off. It's 11 kilowatts AC charging. So that is pretty good. You get an 11 kilowatt AC charge cable included as well. Now, keep in mind though, if you wanna charge at 11 kilowatts, you'll have to have three phase power at home or somewhere else uh, and it does mean that if you buy the 77 kilowatt hour version of this van it's going to take about eight hours to recharge the batteries if you buy the bigger battery pack it's about nine and a half hours or thereabouts but if you are planning to charge on dc so fast charging the uh, numbers are a little bit different you do have faster charging if you buy the bigger battery but it's got a bigger battery so it takes about the same amount of time to charge uh, they say 20 to 80 percent in something like 45 minutes so that's not too bad and it means that essentially you can just have a charge up while you have your lunch or something like that now also keep in mind that there is a difference in terms of the range available for each of the different derivatives of this van range i'm going to put the uh smaller battery numbers on your screen now and now i'll show you what the longer range battery in theory should offer you when it comes to ev driving range you reckon that's good enough Okay, let's talk about the drive experience in the LDV eDeliver 7. So you do have effortless power and torque available to you. It's torque that you need when you've got a load on board. I don't have a load on board right now, but it does make uh, progress a lot easier if you have torque. Torque is pulling power. Electric motors are known for offering plenty of pulling power. And that is the case here too. This is a punchy thing. Even in the eco mode that I'm in right now, it does zip along really, really well. And if you wanna change things to be in a different mode, you can put it into normal, that frees the accelerator up a little bit more, or power, which makes it like fast faster than you'll probably need. So I'll put it back into Eco, and you've also got regenerative braking with three different stages available as well. You've got three, which is the most aggressive, and it sort of behaves like a single pedal driving mode. You can take your foot off the accelerator and it will slow down to an almost halt. You're looking at about 10 k's an hour where it cuts out, so you will still need to use those friction brakes, but they have a nice pedal feel to them as well. So the whole drive experience in terms of going and stopping is really quite seamless it's very very good so what about the other elements of the drive well 
Uh, unladen vans typically don't ride brilliantly, and this is no exception. It does have a pretty firm ride uh, when there's nothing in the back. I haven't had a chance to put anything in the back. This is just a very short launch drive of this vehicle, but I've already driven the high roof long wheelbase version, which does have a slightly more composed ride because it's got extra length between the front and rear wheels, which makes it a bit more planted over bumps. And especially the smaller bumps, you notice that it does iron out a bit better, but hey, it was unladen. And this short wheelbase one that I'm driving now is unladen as well. And look, it does have stiff suspension because all of these vans have a one ton plus payload so um, it's not necessarily the cushiest or coziest but hey you're probably going to be buying this van to run around with a fair bit of weight in the back whether it's a fit out for an electrician or plumber or painter or whatever or whether you're just delivering parcels or something like that um, look it's going to be better when there's weight in the back that's the case with pretty much every single van on the planet because that's what they're designed to do one thing that is impressive about this van though is the steering. Like a lot of vans have great steering, but this is nice and direct and accurate and well weighted, whether you're doing low speed driving like I'm doing now or on the freeway, I've done that as well. And it seems really well suited to pretty much all situations. The big issue really is the fact that despite this is an all new product, it doesn't have a surround view camera. and. While a reversing camera and parking sensors front and rear is good, a surround view camera would be even better because, well, you can't really see that much out of this van and that camera is not the most wide angle lens either. So that could be something that I would like to see improved with this LDV E Deliver 7 because it can be hard to park. Remember that you can't option glazing for the back panels either. You've just got a pretty small field of view outside of this van. One of the biggest annoyances about this car to drive is that it doesn't have a digital speedo as part of the digital display for the driver. And that can be really annoying, especially considering it does have all this technology to tell you what speed limit you should be driving at, but it doesn't actually have a digital speedo to tell you what speed you're doing. Uh, there is an analog speedo obviously, but it's harder to see the increments on it at a glance. All right, let's talk about claimed efficiency figures first. So the official energy consumption numbers on the WLTP standard for the different versions of this vehicle are on your screen. And look, I know there's a lot to cover, but you need to keep in mind that this is a pretty heavy, pretty big vehicle, and it's not necessarily the most aerodynamic thing. So um, it's not surprising to see those sorts of numbers, but in real world driving, as I've been doing today, I've thrown a bit of freeway, highway, urban, stop start, traffic, the usual stuff that you might do if you buy a van like this. You'll see the number that I've seen on your screen now for the long wheelbase high roof and the short wheelbase low roof. So I reckon that those numbers, if you can replicate them in day-to-day -day driving, remember this isn't a loaded test, so it's not necessarily that representative of what you might achieve, but hey, if you do, you'll be laughing, it's pretty good. At the time I'm filming this, which is early February 2024, there is no ANCAP or Euro ANCAP safety rating for this vehicle, but LDV says they are trying to get it rated because they are confident that it does have the safety tech it needs to achieve a good rating, including things like autonomous emergency braking. You've also got lane keeping assistance and emergency lane keeping assistance, adaptive cruise control. There's blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, a driver fatigue monitoring system. And look, some of that stuff is annoying and you might want to turn it off every time you drive the car but hey it's there and it could be interventional in an emergency and it could save your life or someone else's so that's good to see right now when it comes to airbag coverage you've got dual front front side and curtain coverage in this vehicle so six airbags just keep in mind though that having two seats in the front isn't as safe as if it was just a bucket seat layout up front LDV offers a five year warranty for this model and there's an eight year 250,000 kilometer warranty for the battery pack, which is excellent for business users. Now, for the total cost of ownership perspective, keep this in mind. Your servicing intervals are every two years or 
30,000 kilometers, and there's a cap price servicing plan for six years or 90,000 Ks, which costs a total of $1,165. Some diesel vans to do 30,000 Ks would cost more than just $1,165. So 90,000 Ks of relatively affordable motoring in terms of maintenance, and then you've got the cost of running the vehicle in terms of charging as opposed to going to a fuel station seems to stack up really well. The only thing that's really missing here is roadside assist. They don't offer that as standard. So for business buyers out there who are EV curious, go and test drive one of these. I think that the LDV eDeliver 7 does deliver in a lot of ways. There are some things that maybe could be better, but hey, it's going to work really well for fleets and for small businesses as well, I reckon. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. Would you go electric if you were looking for a new van? If you wouldn't, let me know in the comments why. I'd love to hear from you. And if you've already subscribed, thanks very much. If you haven't, please do. It helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.